Hi, welcome. In this video, we will go over the, I mean, what Sabler is, first and foremost, um, as well as the audit competition, uh, which is, uh, as I'm recording this video, about to start um, in a few hours on CodeHox. Um, so let's get started. Um, the the Sabler protocol is really all about token distribution. So our, our product is largely used by organizations uh, like you know, businesses, uh, DAOs, um, so really uh, enterprise customers. Um, and they are mostly using it for vesting, payroll, grants, and airdrops. Um, it's entirely free to use. Uh, it's been used by Shapeshift, by Axie Infinity, uh, by Compound in the past two. Um, and, and so, so we have a sizable TVL and we really take a lot of care with regards to security. Um, so the, the protocol itself is, I mean, the repository, uh, the, the code base, um, is split into two parts. So you have the V2 core, um, I mean, if you look here, uh, you have V2 core, uh, which is essentially the core protocol, which handles the distribution itself of tokens. Um, and then you have uh, V2 Periphery, which is there to support um, the creation of uh, batch payments, um, as well as uh, our Airstreams products. Now, to get a brief idea of what we exactly do, um, when you go on our app, which is located at app.sibler.com, um, if you head over here on Create Streams, you can see um, what our product looks like. So as you can see here, um, you can see that we offer many different distribution curves. And so each of these curves, each of these graphs, um, show, uh, sh shows how, how, in, in what way the tokens will be distributed over time to the recipients. Um, and so with the Sibler code base, we essentially have three core parts of the protocol. Um, the first one is lockup linear. So lockup linear allows you to do linear streams um, as well as cliff streams, but that's where it stops. Lockup linear is really your basic linear type of payment where the recipient receives a fraction of the amount of the total amount every second. Um, that's it. That's lockup linear. That's, a, that, that, that's how simple it is. Then you have lockup tranched. Uh, I mean, let's first start by lockup dynamic. My, my apologies. Um, lockup dynamic is all about extending that ability of distributing tokens, but instead of doing so only linearly, uh, do so in an infinite number of possible ways, uh, like exponentially, for example, or via a step curve, um, or all these possible uh, distribution mechanisms. Um, so lockup dynamic, if you were to look here, um, is unlocking steps. It's unlock each month, it's exponential, it's unlock cliff, it's unlock linear, it's time lock, etc. Any curve you can think of, um, uh, you know, in your mind should be doable using um, lockup dynamic, um, as long as it goes up over time, of course, because you can you cannot take back money from the recipients when it's already been paid out. Um, now, that's where we were at um, until a few months ago. And then we thought, well, what if we build lockup tranched? Um, so we have lockup linear, lockup dynamic, lockup tranched. Now, lockup tranched is essentially replacing lockup dynamic for some of the distribution curves. And as the name says, it's for tranches. So our lock is in steps, unlock each month, um, our distribution curves, which can be done using uh, lockup tranched. And so the core idea with lockup tranched is that uh, lockup dyna dynamic works, um, but it's not necessarily uh, the most gas efficient way of doing things when you have this type of like clear um, predictive schedule of like, you know, tranches essentially. Um, so we decided to just build, build an entire um, module in our protocol specifically for that uh, part. Um, so that's the regular um, the token distribution aspect of our protocol. Now, this is all part of the V2 core repository. Um, something worth noting here, which is very important to, to, to understand the difference with our 
other products called Airstreams, is that with regular streams, so what, what you saw here, the main aspect is that um, when you create the stream, uh, even if it starts in one year from now, the object itself, the object of the stream will be created right after the block is mined in which the transaction, like the create stream transaction is located in. So that's the main difference with um, Airstreams, where with Airstreams, so if you go here, um, our, our main goal was to save gas fees because Airstreams is really tailored for airdrops Whereas our regular streams product is really tailored for, you know, vesting, payroll, grants, um, payments where you don't have 50,000 recipients. Um, but for, for Airstreams, it's actually quite frequent to have, you know, um, thousands and thousands and maybe hundreds of thousands of recipients. And so in that case, um, it can cost a ton of money in terms of gas fees if you have to create all those streams yourself. Um, and so the main difference with Airstreams is, as opposed to um, you paying gas fee to create each stream, um, it's the recipients doing so. And they do so when they claim the Airstream, the airdrop, essentially. So um, in practice, what this looks like is they go to our interface or the interface of the project if they built their own interface for claiming. Um, they claim the airdrop. And during that, like in that claim transaction, the um, uh, the stream is created. And so it's the recipient who pays the gas fee. And all the creator has to do is pay the gas fee to create the contract, which handles uh, the logic to um, authenticate uh, eligible users. Uh, and we do so via uh, a Merkle tree. Now, the important aspect to, to, to understand here is that the um, the stream only starts when it is claimed. So if a recipient claims one year from now, and the stream lasts uh, two months, for example, like there's two months uh, two months of, of vesting, um, the two months will start one year from now when they actually claim. Um, so so th that's an important thing to to to, re to remember. Um, now in each case. Uh, because really the difference between our streams and streams is really just a way of creating the stream. That's it. Uh, afterwards, it's the exact same thing. Now, something to keep in mind is that a regular streams product is part of the V2 core re repository. Our, our our streams product is part of the um, periphery. So if we go back here, uh, we have V2 core, which really handles everything with regards to token distribution as well as the NFT logic. Uh, that's something I forgot to mention, which is that every stream in Sablier, um, whether it was created directly or through an Airstream campaign, is represented by an NFT. That NFT um, has different attributes. Um, it's represented by an um, SVG uh, image, and um, the creator of the stream um, can make it untransferable. So if they don't want the recipient to be able to transfer it to someone else, um, they can make it untransferable. Now, the logic for Airstreams is handled in V2 periphery. Um, and you will also find in V2 periphery the ability uh, to create batch streams, uh, where um, th th there is a part of the logic to create, um, uh, like, like the necessary logic to create multiple streams at once um, is... Uh, is stored inside the uh, V2 periphery uh, repository. Um, so that's pretty much the overview uh, with regards to Sablier. One last thing to keep in mind is that when you create um, a stream, um, so you know you can put your address, uh, the amount, the duration, whatever. Um, as I mentioned, you can make it untransferable, but another important feature is you can make it uncancelable. So streams in Sibler V2 have two important features, transferability, cancelability. If you make it uncancelable, you, as the creator of the payments, you cannot, you, you cannot cancel it. Um, now, if you leave it as cancelable, you can stop the payment at any time and get the funds back which haven't yet been paid out to the recipient. Um, this is usually a very handy feature for you know, uh, users using this for 
um, payroll, for example, or vesting, if they're doing so to an employee, um, or if to an investor who has a problem, for example, with their wallets, well, they can just cancel the stream and get the funds back, which haven't been paid out at that specific time. Um, okay, so that was the overview for Sablier as you know a general product. Okay, let's get into the code base. So um, in the code base, um, so I've I've cloned the um, repository uh, on my my, my computer. Um, one important thing to mention first: all that is um, covered by the competition is everything that is to find here in the source uh, folder. Um, everything outside of it um, is not covered uh, by the uh, audit contest. Um, and so here, as you can see, we have v2core and v2periphery. Um, again, v2core, core token distribution logic, as well as the NFT logic. Um, v2periphery is our streams, batch streams. That's it. So batch streams, the ability to create a group of streams all at once. That's it. Okay. So you can find in the v2core um, repository, uh, if you go in source, you can find the core um, logic. Um, as I said, you have lockup linear, uh, which, which is what, 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 what we talked about earlier, um, which really handles linear token distribution and only that. Um, so that's a, a whole code base, a whole um, file. Um, you have lockup trenched, which handles the step function uh, type of distribution curves, um, which really is just a way of making it more gas efficient because there's nothing stopping you from doing so via uh, lockup dynamic. And in fact, that's what we did until now. Um, so if if this very day you go to our interface um, before we launch uh, this new version of Siblier um, and you create a, a step function stream, um, it will be done using lockup dynamic. Um, and then you have lockup dynamic, uh, which is again, all of the other types of streams, whether it's, for example, an exponential stream, uh, as just um, a quick example. Um, on the periphery side, um, yeah, so, so sorry, uh, just one more thing. So you have your types here. Um, you have in the library uh, file, uh, you have the error messages here. Um, you have the helper functions here, the NFT um, SVG, uh, as well as the uh, SVG uh, elements uh, file. Uh, in the interfaces, um, you have all your hooks. Um, so if you're not aware, um, Sibler v2 has um, uh, a hook system, um, kind of similar to um, Uniswap v4 hooks. Um, it's not the exact same thing, but it's kind of along the same uh, lines. Um, and then in the abstracts, you have your core... Um, uh, your core uh, lockup file, uh, which is you know, really the foundation, uh, I, I would say, of the v2 core um, code base, uh, Solidity uh, code base. Um, that's for v2 core. Now, with regards to per periphery, again, only the source file is covered. Um, and here, it's the exact same thing. Um, you have batch lockup used to create batch streams, uh, which really are, again, batch streams, just ability to create multiple streams at once. Um, and then you have everything that has to do with our streams, which is really essentially in the end, just milk trees, because that's really what our streams is all about. When you create an Earthstream campaign, you deploy a contract which contains a milk tree, which is used to authenticate eligible users. If they're eligible, the Merkle, the Merkle contract allows them to create the stream. Uh, and so when they claim the stream is created um, and they have uh, the stream uh, for themselves. Okay, Semax, new outfit. Um, in this part of the video, we'll go over how to set up the uh, repositories um, to get started hacking. Um, the, first, the first step is really very simple. Uh, when, when you download the actual um, repository from CodeHacks, uh, you will see that there are two subsections. Uh, as we saw earlier in the video, there is feature core, feature periphery. Um, in this part of the, in, you know, in, in this section, I will go over how to set up VG core. Um, but it's the exact same process for v periphery. So if you're focusing more on v periphery, um, it's it's the exact same thing. So when you go into v core, you can, um, I, I'm going to clear this, you can take the commands from codehawks 
and um, simply just execute them. That's really just how easy it is. So just install everything, and then the latter command is bun run build, which takes some time to complete. Um, yeah, so it's going to compile all the all the files uh, in the repository, and there are <laughs> quite a few, so it's going to take some time. Um, so I, I will stop the video here, I mean this section here, um, but just to provide a brief overview uh, on the other commands. Uh, so you have bun run, which is uh, very useful as it shows you all the possible commands you can execute um, using the bun run command. Um, so you know you have bun run build, bun run something, bun run something else, anyway. Um, and then you have um, this command, which allows you to run tests. And so when you execute this command, you will see that it just executes all the tests uh, which are available in the, in the code base. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how simple it is. Um, again, if you're focusing more on the feature periphery, um, it's the exact same thing. That's it. I guess that was it. Let us know if you have any questions uh, or need any help. We're there to, to support you guys. And uh, yeah, good hacking. See you soon. Bye.